Frank Knapp, Jr. Commissioner, thank you very much. And I want to thank you and uh, all the commissioners for uh, allowing me to participate in this hearing. Commissioners, this docket comes down to answering two critical questions. Is cost shift occurring? And if so, how much are residential and small commercial customers subsidizing the solar customers in their respective classes? Mr. Rooks gave Dominion Energy's estimate of cost shift. Residential non-solar customers are paying $1.38 more a month to subsidize Dominion Energy South Carolina residential solar customers. Small business non-solar customers are paying 28 cents more a month to subsidize Dominion Energy South Carolina small business solar customers. But Mr. Rooks went on to admit that should the commission approve the company's solar choice tariff, the non-solar residential and small commercial customers will not now see any financial benefit. They won't see any financial benefit even in the current Dominion General Rate docket in front of the commission. It won't be until the next Dominion General Rate hearing years from now before there might be any financial benefit. We also determined that residential and small commercial customers are not paying higher utility bills today to subsidize solar customers. Mr. Rook's estimate of $1.38 and 28 cents cost shift won't materialize until years down the road in a future docket if a solar tariff doesn't see some change before then. Or it might not even materialize then because frankly, we have no idea what will happen in the energy field before then. So let's be clear. Low-income customers are not paying $1.38 more a month to subsidize solar customers. There are no non-solar residential customers paying $1.38 a month to subsidize solar customers. No small business is paying $0.28 cents more a month to subsidize solar customers. The commission should acknowledge that today and for years to come, the dreaded cost shift doesn't exist, and then move on to the clearly stated intent of Act 62. The first stated legislative intent is to build on the deployment of solar generating capacity by reducing regulatory and administrative burden to customer installation and utilization of on-site distributed energy resources. Commissioners, burden to me equates to cost. Clearly, the solar choice tariff will reduce the savings, thus increase the cost on existing and future customer installation and utilization of rooftop solar. The second stated legislative intent is to avoid disruption to the growing market for customer scale distributed energy resources. Witnesses have shown conclusively that the South Carolina solar rooftop market is not a healthy growing market. And as someone who has been in the advertising business since 1991, I can tell you that when you cut the benefit of a product by around 60% and that product is very pricey, the sales of that product are going to drop significantly. That is the future of the solar market under the solar choice tariff. It will be greatly disrupted and we will lose the reputable solar companies in our state. And then finally, uh, we get to the third legislative intent, an intent that is framed by the first two unequivocal legislative intents. That intent is to establish a solar choice metering requirement that fairly allocates costs and benefits to eliminate cost shift or subsidization to the greatest extent practical. Commissioners, I am not an attorney, but I can read the plain language of the law and importantly, the order of the stated intents of the legislature. There is a reason that addressing any potential cost shift was listed third by the legislature. The first two intents did not hedge on what the legislature wanted in the commission's decision. Only until we get to the legislative intent number three, do we see concern for cost shift? Yes, the intent is to eliminate it to the greatest extent practical. But cost shift doesn't exist today. Dominion's witnesses admit as much. So what should the commission do? The legislature did direct you to establish a tariff by June 1st. 
given what we know today, information that the legislature did not have when it passed Act 62, I would recommend two options. First, you could opt to keep the present solar metering program as the new tariff. Establish a new docket to further examine what minor changes might be a good idea, even if there is no cost shift now. And finally, instruct all the parties to work together to develop a consensus proposal that correctly assesses costs and benefits. Or you can simply adopt Witness Beach's joint solar choice tariff that does the best job of meeting the intent of Act 62. Thank you for allowing me to participate in this important docket, and I hope that I have contributed constructively to the hearing. Thank you, Mr. Knapp, for participating.